Plum, and I'd like to welcome you all to this segment of From the Hip. Today we're going to switch gears. Today we are going to be talking about women's issues, women's issues specifically in Florida. And I am thrilled because we have with us today in studio an expert on the issue. We have State Representative Lori Berman. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me on the show today. Oh, it, it's really our pleasure to have you and I really appreciate you taking the time. So women's issues. There are so many things that are popping to my mind when I, when I think about that and it's near and dear to my heart. First of all, obviously I am a woman. I also have a daughter. So, and, and I know you know that because we have talked about that before. So, what are some of the women's issues that you see pop up in your day-to-day -day travels? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest issues that affect the women in the state of Florida is the issue of equal pay for equal work. Okay, yes. Um, women in Florida only get 87 cents to a dollar that a man makes. And over a lifetime, it, you know, when you hear 13 cents, you don't think it's as big a deal. But over a lifetime, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. For professional women, it can be even in the millions, the difference between a woman making the same as a man. And interestingly, the Florida's gap is smaller than a lot of other places, and so you would think that means that we're doing a better job, but actually right. it's not what it means. Okay. The reason why the gap in Florida is smaller, I think it's uh, 79 cents nationwide, but we're at 87, is because we have more minimum wage workers in the state of Florida. Oh, is that right? Yes, okay. so that makes the gap narrower because there are, you know, whether you're a man or a woman and getting paid minimum wage, you have to get paid that amount of money. So that changes the, the gap, but it's still, it's a pervasive problem in, in, in society and, and it really hurts women and it hurts their families. It does, it does. So. I am curious is why is there such a gap? I mean, we are we are in 2017, aren't we? The gap should really be minimal or not there at all. So why is why does it still exist? You know, I guess it's it's institutional. Um, people think that women are are working as a, you know, for fun or as a second job and they just don't sometimes take us as seriously and the other part of the other thing is we need to lean in and also make sure that we're making the same salary as men and we need to be saying, uh, you know, be finding out those kinds of things. Unfortunately, employers don't encourage people to talk about their salary and often discourage it. Um, I've sponsored an equal pay for equal work bill in the state of Florida and one of the things in my bill says if you're an employer and your employees talk about your salary, you can't retaliate against them for Isn't talking right? about it. Okay. Um, the bill hasn't passed. We're trying to get, we haven't even been able to get a hearing on it. Um, but that's something that we need to do because people need to understand that, you know, that they're being paid less than a man for comparable work. Right, right. And that's very important. Is there anything, and I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you talk, and really, I mean, and I salute you for standing up for things like that. Is there anything that we can do as bystanders to help with that? Sure, absolutely. This year in the legislature, we actually held a really a rally in Tallahassee. We had people come. We had about 200 women. And you know, that's where you really make a difference. The Capitol is six hours from Palm Beach County. It's very isolated. We get up there, people are in a bubble and they, they don't remember that we're representing all these constituents. So the more you can come to Tallahassee and meet one-on-one -on -one with your legislature, legislator and say, there's an equal pay for equal work bill, I'd like you to hear it. I think it's important for us to do equal pay for equal work in the state of Florida. That's how you can really start to make a difference. And when we held those rallies in Tallahassee, yes. we had some satellite rallies throughout the state also. Really? Yeah, so okay. we need to have more rallies and more discussions one-on-one -on -one with your legislature and tell them that this is what you want. Oh, that's important, that's important. So equal pay, so I'm sure there are other issues that are out there. What sure. jumps to your mind? Family and medical leave. Oh, I mean, that's so, important. Yeah, yes. I mean, we have so many uh, women who you know are in the workforce now at a young age and so they're they have children and they also often are caught uh, in this sandwich where they have elderly parents too and who are who are oftentimes ill so we need to put in place a system like in many other European countries where a woman can take time off 
to go take care of her children, to take care of her elderly parents, and not be penalized in the workforce, not you know lose her place in the queue as it as it's moving along. Um, and we need to figure out how to how to do better child care for working women, not just taking time off. But if you want to continue your job, you need to have adequate child care. Um, right now, child care is extraordinarily expensive for it working is. women. It it, is. It's extra. It's it's unfair. It's an unfair burden on families, and we need to figure out what we can do. I know there's some discussion on the federal levels about that. There was a bill in the in the Florida legislature also. But um, so it's a good policy area where we can analyze and see what we can do to help uh, working women be able to succeed in, in, the, in the workplace with all these family and medical issues. Right. You know, it's popping to my mind because I have had come across people who, uh, women, who have wanted to jump into the working environment but did have children and not just children but they had children with disabilities and so it was sometimes more expensive to get the child care uh, they were not making enough to pay for the child care so that definitely is something that is needed don't you think absolutely yeah. I mean we definitely you know at the disability is even a whole another layer of yes. it which makes it so much harder for people and and we have so many um, children who are coming up in our system who are, ha have autism, for instance. I mean, I think one in right. eight children now are born with autism, and that's something that parents often have to deal with much beyond when a child is 18, just like having a disability. So it is something that we, as a society, need to address. We need to figure out what we're gonna do for these people who, who wanna be part of the workforce, who wanna be productive, who could be productive, Yes. but have family situations that are that make it difficult for yes, them. Yes, very, very. You know, there is a quote. I, you're talking and there's a quote that's popping to my mind by Harv Eckert, where attention goes, results show. I so like that's it. Kind of a, that's kind of a call I love to action it. here, It too, sure is, right? absolutely. I mean, that's what Tallahassee's all about. Right, right. Where we get attention, we will, we will get results on those issues. Yes. We yeah. definitely have to draw attention. Yeah. All right, so any other women's issues? Um, I'd still love to see the Equal Rights Amendment passed. Oh, um, yeah. Right. It's, yes. uh, interestingly, um, it just passed this last year in the state of Nevada. Really? So Nevada was one of the, I guess it's 15 states that hadn't passed the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, we, when the Equal Rights Amendment originally went through, um, it was three states short okay. of having the necessary number of states. The time period has expired, um, but nevertheless, Nevada, the state of Nevada just passed it. So now we're down to, they used to say we were in a three-state solution. Now we're down to a two-state solution okay. with Florida being one of those two states, which could be fascinating. And I think if we could get two more states, then we could get to a tipping point where Congress would maybe go back and look at the issue. And the reason why I really want the Equal Rights Amendment passed, I mean, it, we wouldn't need an equal pay for equal work if, if the Equal Rights Amendment was passed. The amendment gives women the same protection that men have, and we could use that law to sue for equal, equal pay for equal work. People are just don't realize, but now there is no constitutional protection for a woman to be equal to a man without the Equal Rights Amendment. That's the way we are right now. That's interesting what you're saying, uh, because that kind of puts a whole new perspective. But the Equal Equal Rights Amendment really could fix a lot of other problems. Absolutely, that you summed it up purpose, perfectly. And okay. you know right, what happens in the court system is they're not sure how to adjudicate these cases where people bring them based on discrimination for being a woman. Regard you know what anything it could be in lodging, it could be staying at a hotel, being mistreated, it could be in your job. Yes. So anywhere where there's potential discrimination, the, when you have these court cases, they're not sure what standard to use, but if women were a protected class, they would have to use the highest standard and it would be across the, the nation. Every case would be decided according to that higher standard, which That's, would be great. That is wonderful. That's really yeah. puts a new perspective on it. So in concluding this interview, and again, thank you so much for joining us, if there's any words of wisdom you could give women out there with regards to equal rights, what would it be? Be active. Take the initiative yourself. Make sure that you know that you're being treated equally at all times. You need to be aware of 
if in your workplace and in, in your daily life and in your interactions and in your staying at a hotel just make sure that you're not being discriminated against and then if you are figure out you know an appropriate venue for taking responsibility I think the more that we are aware and voice our concerns the more that we can make changes I agree I agree because it's not just about us personally is it I, I, and it, it's about our our daughters our granddaughters and even other people out there that we don't know by getting involved we can help so much absolutely so, so please for, be involved yes, absolutely. <laughs> so for people out there that are seeing this interview and they want to know more about you they want to contact you or even ask questions about what we talked about today where would you point them my website is lori l-o-r-i dot berman b-e-r-m-a-n at my Florida house, one word, myfloridahouse.gov. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the entire Plum Talk team, I want to thank you again for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm always happy to come back. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So for all you viewers out there, this has been another segment of From the Hip. So until next time, this is Dr. Shelley Plum.